Hi there, I'm Alex, a co-op here at Voiceflow, and today I'm going to be doing a little bit more of a technical walkthrough of how I made the Shopify embedded AI experience with a bit of setup instructions, going into the, all the details of the exact features and some of the implementation of things like the custom page slug, loading in product information, and then setting the add to cart button and things like that. So that if anyone would be interested in developing similar kind of app themselves or installing the app I've had, tinkering with it and deploying it to a real Shopify store, this should be a good video to get you started with a grasp of what this project is about. This video is probably going to be quite long, so make sure to use the chapters below to jump around the video to the parts that's relevant for you. And as usual with these videos, it's a bit more of a proof of concept than an end product. If you want to deploy it to a real store, you probably need some development work to change things up and abstract away some API keys, but this should give you an idea of what's possible with the Voiceflow platform. So let's get straight into it. So in case you haven't seen the previous video, don't worry, we're going to do a quick walkthrough of what this extension has to offer. So it's a Shopify theme app extension, which embeds itself into the website. It's not just like a little widget that we're adding onto the corner. It's properly a block we can add. So here we have the AI block and we can interact with it. So of course, it's a connection to a Voiceflow chat agent. The actual full flow is built out here with a bunch of workflows. Here we see this main menu that's being served on our website and it has a bunch of different actions it can do. Each of these actions is tailored to a certain part of the website though. So when we go to a page, like for example, looking at a specific snowboard, when we're actually on the product page, it will jump to the contextual part of the agent that is to discuss products. And in here it has some suggestion buttons for it and it knows we're talking about the collection snowboard liquid. And if I say, how long is it? It's actually gonna answer based off of the information it's being fed in. So 160 centimeters long, 160 centimeters long. This is founded off a knowledge base we're synchronizing product information with our Voiceflow project using Streamline Connect. So this is one of the features. Then we can also, if we go, for example, to the policy page, it knows we're on the policy page. If we go to the rewards page, it knows we're on the rewards page. It updates a different part of the agent, but this is the same agent throughout the whole thing. If I want to go back to main menu, I can talk about product recommendations just like I can when I'm on the catalog page and it jumps directly here. Another feature this extension has is the ability to serve custom buttons. So here we actually have an order now button. There's more than just a basic voice flow button that brings you down a certain path. It's actually triggered by a custom action on voice flow's end and then displayed here so that when you click it, it actually adds the product you're looking at to your cart. So now that we've seen the features, let's walk through how it was programmed. This is using Shopify's theme app extension uh, system where it lets you add custom apps that create blocks for your Shopify app. Where you can write extensions that get injected into Shopify stores with HTML and CSS, or instead of HTML, it's actually Shopify's liquid, but it's HTML-like. So this is done um, through a theme app extension that we can generate through the Shopify CLI, and in here, it gives us a block that's injected. So here we just have the voice flow chat uh, block that I made, and really the bulk of it here is actually just getting information uh, from Shopify, and then there's a short piece of code where we're actually rendering the chat box, and that calls off to a snippet which is this part that has all the actual divs where all the information is fed into. So just real quick going into the information here, the most important is to look at the schema. This is how we do all the configuration from inside Shopify itself. So it's where we get to choose the product discussed, the page slug handle, the colors, all these things. And they're just directly fed into the block. So once we have them, things like the color for the user background color, I'm able to assign a variable to in liquid which is then fed into the CSS styling that I do at the top. But yes, this snippet just contains a bunch of divs and then it runs our JavaScript. The JavaScript is what's doing the bulk of the work. For now, the JavaScript is just written as one mega file that handles everything. And it also has the API keys encoded in hard code at the top. And with a little bit more work, you could add them to the Shopify admin dashboard so you could enter your API keys for in here. But for now, they're just inside the JavaScript. This JavaScript is structured like most voiceflow chat interfaces are. You have a interaction function that actually does all the heavy lifting, and then you have a system to handle the conversation state. So here the conversation state is pretty much entirely managed by the user ID, which I've just done as a generated big random number that's in a string, and that's then passed whenever you're interacting with voiceflow. The interact function is then able to send API requests to voiceflow and get answers back. And I just wrote a couple functions around that that can send certain types of interactions that we use a lot. So like sending a launch request, uh, sending a message, sending an action, or saving the transcript. So all these interactions are slightly different, but they interact with the Voiceflow APIs directly. Then we do a bunch of capturing of the actual elements so that we can reference them because we're not using React or anything fancy here. 
we can directly inject the HTML in. So I am getting a bunch of elements by their ID and we're gonna use them later on to actually inject HTML or get button clicks or add event subscriptions or things like that. Then, and I recommend doing this whenever you're writing a custom interface, I wrote two functions for adding user messages and agent messages. These are the two types of messages that show up. These are user messages, these are agent messages. It's often nice to just have a function that you can write that can quickly add them because you'll be adding maybe messages from a couple different places. So in the, here in the agent messages, we're actually doing some handling of some markdown because Voiceflow classically supports markdown, but whenever we're handling the messages through the custom interface, it'll just be strings. So we're just doing a little bit of replacement to add URLs, to do bolding and italics and adding new lines. And then appending these both to the chat box um, with different classes. So one of them is an agent message, another one is a user message, and that changes the CSS styling as was written up here. Then we also have a function to add buttons, and the buttons themselves, when they get added, have subscriptions so that when they're clicked, they actually send a separate payload to VoiceFlow. So it's here the VoiceFlow send action, and it'll send the buttons associated requests. So the buttons themselves store their own state. We don't need to have a separate variable for that. Then we have a couple functions to show and hide the special buttons like add to cart and share. As I mentioned earlier, these aren't classical voice flow buttons. Those are handled by this add normal agent message button. The add to cart button is actually just a div that contains a form to add to cart. And this is taken from online. People have talked about how can you add own custom add to cart button uh, for Shopify store. So anything you can do with a custom button we can enable with our voice flow agent by just adding it here and then setting the styling to be hidden. And then the special sauce is that whenever we're handling an agent response, if we actually have the add to cart trace appear, we're gonna show the add to cart button. So in this sense, the voice flow agent sends an add to cart instruction and we display a button on our interface just as if it had sent a button normally. Last little details in here is we have a typing indicator that's just shown or hidden. Again, that HTML is always there and we're just enabling or disabling it. And then when we're handling agent responses, we're going through different types of traces. Whenever you're building a voice flow custom interface, you have to deal with all the traces that are being returned. So there's different types of traces. Here, I just decided to implement mainly text and choice because those are the most important. So that's just like the text messages and the buttons. So for now, if there's image steps or carousels or things like that, they're not implemented. But I strongly encourage you, if you enjoy this project, to try to be creative and add them yourself. Just to finish it out, we have a send message function that is used so that whenever we have the send button, we can add an event listener to it. So whenever you click the send button, it actually sends the message, as well as a listener that checks, hey, has someone clicked the button enter to also automatically send the message there. And then to finish off the JavaScript, after everything is loaded, we send a launch request with the product name and the page slug specified above. These are actually passed to VoiceFlow. These are passed, first of all, to the chat box um, as variables in Liquid. And then when it gets to the snippet, it's actually adding it to the chat container as data pieces. These data pieces are then captured by JavaScript further down the line. The product name and page jug are actually extracted here by looking at the data set of that chat container object. And then they're parsed further down when you have a launch request. If you didn't know before, in VoiceFlow, you can actually specify a custom data to be sent with your launch request. On the VoiceFlow end, let's take a look at how this part works. So when our agent starts in the home flow, the first thing it'll do is it'll actually encounter this JavaScript step. This JavaScript step is gonna look at the last event item in VoiceFlow, which is what you can use to actually pass this custom data to, and we're gonna to try to extract the information from the last event. So we're gonna check if the last event has a payload, and that payload has a product name, then we know that we have a product found, and we will store that in a VoiceFlow variable called product name, and we'll go down the product found path, in which case we directly jump to discussing about a specific product, and then once it has that, it's gonna to jump to checking if the user has already asked a question, which it probably hasn't. And then it'll go ask them what they wanna learn about that product. That's what happens when you're on this page, for example, and you go to Oxygen Snowboard. It's gonna send the product information and then VoiceFlow will jump straight to here with talking about that part of the product. And then the way the JavaScript is actually getting the product for each specific page is that we have this custom schema in here with a setting to get the actual product being discussed. And that's such autofill equals true. So Shopify will extract the product from whatever product page we're on, send it to the JavaScript, which can then send it to VoiceFlow when it's starting the conversation, and VoiceFlow can then handle to go to that specific part of the conversation and know that that's the context of the board we're talking about now. So to actually tell VoiceFlow what part of the website we're on, if we're not on a product page, but we still want contextual information, we're using a page handling slug. This is another variable we're passing to VoiceFlow automatically, but it is set here. So again, it's a setting inside the schema, 
I'm able to set a string to whatever the handling slug I want it to be. So here I set it to policy. So here there's a variable for the page slug. It's passed to the chat box. The chat box stores it again as data. The JavaScript will extract it and then send it to VoiceFlow here in the end, the page slug. Then from VoiceFlow, when again I start the project, if I didn't find a product, I'm going to check if I find a page slug. And if I do, again, I'll store it in a custom variable and I'll check. Does this page slug match any of the pages I'm expecting? So if the page slug contains the word policy, then we know we're going to be wanting to jump to the policy's intent. So it's just sort of skipping that start of the user conversation so that we can save time. Same thing again, if you want rewards, it will go there. And then if it doesn't, it will just go to the normal menu. In case you spelled anything wrong, nothing will totally break on your website. So all in all, that's an overview of how all the programming is done. Pretty much it's Liquid and JavaScript. We're interacting with VoiceFlow through the VoiceFlow APIs and a bunch of functions that facilitate the interactions. And then we're having custom data through the Shopify schemas that's then being fed through, first of all, the Shopify settings, then to the Liquid, then the JavaScript's extracting it. And the JavaScript is sending it to VoiceFlow when it launches the conversation, so VoiceFlow can have that extra context. And then VoiceFlow is going to the specific places. Other than that, there's just all the classic custom interface information, like handling traces, sending requests, keeping track of user ID. And then we have a little bit of extra special stuff on top with that Add to Cart button, which is facilitated through VoiceFlow's custom actions, but then getting that trace and displaying the Add to Cart button, which wouldn't be easy to do if you're just making a basic web chat or a bottom right hand corner chatbot. And it's really useful to have it deeply embedded here rather than just being a little widget that you add to your website because it gives us control of all of Shopify's information and so we can interact with it directly. So to set up this project, first of all, make sure to clone the GitHub repo in the description below. So next up, you have to import the VoiceFlow project from the repo. So we can go navigate to it, select it, open. It'll add it to our VoiceFlow project and now we can open it up, so in the designer. And then from here, as long as we run the project one time, so we can just run test, make sure to train the NLU. And then once it's trained, we can publish this agent so that we can access its API key externally. So we go up here, we click publish, and then this is being published. We can look in the meantime, there's nothing in our knowledge base, there's no content here. Once you send it to Streamline Connector, it should look something like this, except without these two example stores. And in the top, you'll go add assistant, but what we can do is we can get our API key, copy it, we go put it on Streamline now, uh, testing agent two. From inside Streamline Connector, we can add this API key, and then we can go to Manage Data, Create, Send Products, which sends our products of our Shopify store to our VoiceFlow knowledge base. So we want to send all active products, send products, um, and then we're going to choose to send it hourly. We're going to include title, description. You, you can leave these all as they usually are. And then make sure to leave tag as product data on because it lets us look it up specifically in the knowledge base. Then you can just confirm and save. That will send it over to your VoiceFlow assistant. And if you give it a couple seconds, we can reload our VoiceFlow agent and see it's here. So if we go to the knowledge base, boom, now our products have been sent over using Streamline Connector to our VoiceFlow project. So that's all the setup we need to do on our VoiceFlow end. If we want, we can customize even more. So we can go here, we can change our assistant, we can change the name of the store, uh, any branding, we can even add new flows as we described in the previous video. But the example here is what we need to get started with the demo I've prepared. Then you're gonna CD into the shop extensions folder. So CD shop extensions. And then make sure you've installed Node.js at least 22. You've installed the latest version of Ruby. You've created the Shopify partners account, which is a special account you can use to develop custom apps for Shopify. And you've installed the Shopify CLI. Also make sure you've created a Shopify development store. Here, my development store is Alex's snowboard store, but it's just pre-populated with a bunch of example data for snowboards, which helps you get up and started faster and lets you develop with your Shopify app. Then make sure to run npm install to install all the dependencies for your Shopify app, and then make sure to run npm run dev. And that will start the Shopify CLI. It will prompt us to log in in our browser. So if we just press any key, it'll open an account. We can just click here, sign in, we're being redirected, so if we go back, we're signing and set up. Make sure to click no, connect it to an existing app and choose VoiceFlow in store. If this doesn't come up, then say to create a new app, but in my case it does, so VoiceFlow in store. So then once that's done, we get to choose what store we wanna link it to. We're gonna link it to Alex's snowboard store. And now the project is all configured. It's starting off the Shopify CLI and pushing our extension to the cloud so we can then use it. 
we should go to the integrations page and get our API key and update everything appropriately in the chatbox.js file. So update the API key here, as well as going in and updating the project ID and version ID. This will make sure transcripts are saved correctly. Copy these and save, and the Shopify CLI will automatically push the new assets to our store. So now that both the app on Shopify's end and the voice approach are set up, we're actually good to go. We can go to our store. So if we go to our admin page and we want to go add AI to one of the new pages, go to online store, choose themes, customize your theme. So now that we're in the Shopify app customizer, we can just add a section on the left side here with a app. So now we've added the chat at the bottom and it's linked to our agent on voice flows end. So if you're a developer, I'm asking you to please try to clone this project on GitHub. Um, all the code is open source, as well as the voice flow template itself. Set it up and try to play around with it a little bit. Make something creative, experiment, change the format, change the styling, change the user experience. And maybe instead of making it a chat box, you make it a search bar or any other creative things you can think of. Then once you have that, make sure to both comment in the description below, as well as joining our community on Discord. And there's gonna be a channel just for this video about the Shopify interface. And I would love to see what everyone's able to make with it. And especially make sure to post if you decided to add this to your Shopify store so we can see how it goes and learn more lessons as a community. If you're interested in more resources for making voice flow custom interfaces, advanced agents, or those kinds of things, make sure to check out our YouTube channel where we have tons of tutorials, guides, and discussions. Our voice flow docs where we have tons of documentation on building these kinds of things and using the voice flow APIs to make advanced agents. And our demos and examples GitHub repository full of these kinds of advanced use cases of voice flow for AI agents. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you around.